Hey guys, so it is a lovely January uh, weekend. It's uh, about 11 Celsius out and all the snow pretty much has melted. That's about, what does that work out to? I think that's about 50 Fahrenheit. So uh, suffice it to say uh, this is a rather warm January or at least a warm start to it. It's going to be warm today and tomorrow. So I figured I'd get out into the shop and do something. Now, I gotta do ex assemble my electronics into this case, but that would involve sitting inside, and I'd much rather be outside, so I'm gonna do a little bit of lathe work. Uh, I got these. This is a, a well timing belt. You'd, I'd call it a timing belt, but I guess it's a cog belt is what it really is. And it came with a couple of gears, and you might an observant person would notice certainly that they're not the same size so they really wouldn't be suitable for keeping my y-axis in time so I actually bought two sets because they were only six bucks for this whole combination of two pulleys and a belt so uh, I bought two sets but hang on but um, the even the smaller of the two uh, pulleys uh, is uh, too small or is too big actually um, the belt span you know between uh, pulleys is greater uh, center to center is greater than uh, than the 11 and a half inches I need or sorry is less than the 11 and a half inches I need so I really need two smaller pulleys of the same you know like uh, pitch so uh, I figured why not make them look like they'd be fairly easy to make uh, seems to me turn a couple of uh, of blanks out and uh, just you know like uh, turn the center down leave a little bit of an edge and then I'll just use the uh, the uh, uh, rotary table boy that took me a second to remember that use the rotary table and a ball end mill to uh, cut the grooves in it it'll be a little tedious but uh, not too big a deal certainly faster than getting it here there's another reason why it couldn't be used either is they uh, used one of these kind of uh, half moon or whatever you want to call it uh, D style of uh, of fittings uh, on them so they wouldn't have been much good anyways I would have had to board them out minimally but uh, nevertheless I got the got the belts and uh, I'm gonna work with them that way so now I just what I gotta do now is I got to figure out uh, what diameter I need to make these uh, to have 11 and a half inches center to center. So I'll have to do a little bit of calculations. Obviously, you're not taking it uh, the diameter that you're turning it down to from the bottom of the uh, or the, from the tip of these uh, nibs. You're taking it from the root, but uh, nevertheless. Just so you know, I'm taking that into account. Now, the other things that I have to do uh, before I can mount my electronics into this box are I need to make some uh, uh, covers over these, which doesn't sound that difficult, but I actually want to uh, use a couple of these DB9 connectors in there so that I can mount it. And uh, what I'm going to use those for is I'll put three in for uh, uh, the... Uh, each of the stepper motor controllers and a fourth one in for the uh, um, uh, limit switches, which I'm not sure I'm going to use, but uh, I'd rather have it available and and not use it than uh, than need it and uh, not have it. So I'm just going to make a couple of steel plates and I'll just route out a couple of uh, of holes in it. You know, it's the proper size to uh, bring these in from the backside and screw them in place. And, uh, of course, the other thing I need to do is some way of mounting my uh, stepper drivers in here. I suppose I could just screw them to the side here. Wouldn't be a big deal. But I think what I'll do is I'll just make a little tray. Just bend up a little steel tray that I can drop in here and, uh, and mount it that way. And then from there, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I did some testing with those drivers last night and the... Uh, new larger motors that I wasn't going to end up using for uh, for this but it'll come in very handy for another project but nevertheless uh, and uh, they work very very well uh, those new motors are kinda noisy but they have got a hell of a lot more torque than the other ones so I think it'll prove to be a very satisfying product 
project product whatever uh, for the you know for the next project anyways before I can before I completely can't speak anymore I'll uh, I'll uh, get uh, doing something okay I thought I'd just go through the quick steps here not that I'm trying to teach anybody but I'm just showing what I'm doing and eh, with the hope that if anybody wants to come along and say a better way of doing it well, they will okay so I've got a blank I've cut it off to about 0.85 of an inch and I want to turn it into about uh, three quarter inch I've already made one blank here um, and so what I've done is I've chucked it in the three jaw self-centering chuck I'm going to face this end off till it's smooth, then I'll flip it around, and then I'll face it to depth. Then I'll uh, drill out the hole, which, uh, well, I'll go get, let's do it one thing at a time, okay? Okay, so I faced off this end. It's, uh, it's uh, at, you know, three-quarter of an inch. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a center drill in to the tailstock here, and uh, just uh, drill it out to... Uh, to start a hole, then I'll uh, go eighth, probably, I don't know, five sixteenths, and then to fifteen sixteenths, and then I'll uh, ream it to a quarter inch. Uh, I don't think I need to show each operation, but uh, that, that's just explaining what I'm going to do here. Okay, so I step drilled this and uh, reamed it up to a quarter. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap in the other uh, set of jaws for the chuck, and uh, I'm going to turn this into a little mandrel to support these while I uh, mill out the channel on them. Okay, so I faced off both ends of uh, my blank here and uh, now I'm going to center drill it and then I'll do the same old step drill thing but I'll step drill it to the tap diameter uh, for quarter inch. Uh, I'll have to go and look up what that is but uh, uh, it doesn't matter to say on the video I don't think. Okay, so I, uh, I put a tap in the tailstock and I just manually turned the lathe to thread it, you know, the usual thing, turn, I, you know, thread it about a turn and then a quarter turn back to break the chips. Went the whole way through and then I just refaced this now just to make sure it's perfectly flat, there's no burr there from the uh, tap. And uh, now I'll mount this and start turning it to diameter. And hopefully it's going to be fairly well centered. These aren't too, too critical, but... I'm trying to do it right because I want to learn something here. So hopefully this is somewhat right. <laughs> okay, so I got the uh, the uh, pulley mounted on the mandrel. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn it down to diameter. And uh, my Ford man, my Ford man, which most people probably read as my Ford man, but my Ford is a is a lathe brand. And I showed uh, I watched a video actually earlier today. Uh, called, I think it was Lathe the Work for Beginners, or Lathe Turning for Beginners, and uh, he had an interesting technique for, uh, um, you know, knowing that you're coming close to your target uh, diameter or measuring your target diameter. And what he did was he would um, take his uh, digital uh, caliper, you know, close it, zero it, and then he would set it to the... Uh, the desired diameter, or the desired measurement. Unfortunately, I'm kind of doing this with the wrong hand here. Let's see if we can change hands here. In my case, it's uh, 181. And we'll just get it up there, 181. It's going to be hard to get it precisely. But there we go, 181. And yeah, it's flicking around with half a thou, but I'll, I'll take that as good enough. And zeroed it at that point so that he knows that if he takes a measurement now, how much he has to take off. So I take a measurement. Unfortunately, maybe I could do it a little bit better way that you could actually see. Yeah, I keep switching hands here. Take a measurement. Boy, I'm doing this nowhere near as, as smoothly as he did. And it's saying that I'm about 0.18 oversized there. So I could take, well, I wouldn't, but I could take a 90 thou cut. And uh, and uh, that would bring it almost exactly to the correct diameter. Now that's way more than I'd be willing to take. And considering, you know, how I'm mounted here, there's nothing really to stop it from turning except a little bit of friction. Uh, so I'm going to take pretty light cuts. 
but uh, now I've got that set up I can actually you know periodically stop a lathe and check the diameter and I can see how much further I have to go which I thought was a kind of a neat technique anyways I'm gonna turn this down and uh, then I guess I'm going to cut the uh, center groove out of it okay so I've turned it down to size so as concentrically mounted as it is in the hole here this uh, should be you know equally concentric to that so I think we're good there I deburred it I have to do the back side manually which is a bit of a pain but nevertheless this side I just well I took the file to it when the lathe was running I just knocked the edge off of it this side well obviously I would have probably gotten the lathe in the face if I tried to or I mean sorry the file in the face if I would have tried to knock that uh, off so it's still just a little bit of a burr I can always when I'm done I can always uh, de-chuck it or uh, remove it and uh, and do the same again nevertheless now's the fun part I've got to cut this out in here I think I'm going to put a different tool in this and go from there I actually am not 100% sure how to do this uh, I have in my mind how to do it but uh, we'll see how we go here okay so uh, I think you can guess what I did <laughs> when I cut the uh, groove part of the, uh, uh, well I want to call it a spool because it looks like a spool but it's a pulley, um, is I just cheated and I just grabbed, uh, I think that's a 60 degree tool and I just plunged it in and uh, and actually was cutting when I got to these edges as because I, I went deeper and deeper but as I went to each edge I just uh, ran it up against and was cutting with the side of the tool to do that and uh, I'm sure there's smarter better ways to do it but that's just the quick and dirty way I decide to do it. I'll do the other one the same way. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop as soon as I um, cut the other spool to diameter and cut the uh, cut it to depth and uh, and call it a night. I'm actually tempted to widen that out a little bit but it should be enough for the uh, belt. When I come in and I plunge in to uh, cut the slots for the uh, cogged pulley um, I'll actually catch, a, I'll make a point of catching a little bit of the edge of that uh, the tapered area here and uh, just to make sure that the belt won't be, be catching you know the edge of a, of a rounded uh, slot here. I'll use a ball mill but I have to find out what size I need and I don't know if I if I necessarily have a good selection of ball end mills here. Hopefully I've got the right size. Looks like I'm gonna have probably one choice and that's gonna be an eighth inch I'm assuming that's an eighth because that one already looks too big. So we'll see. Oh yeah, there's eighth and uh, three sixteenths there. Anyways, let's uh, cut another one. Okay, there's the uh, second pulley done. Well, done up to the point where I haven't grooved it for the uh, cogged belt, but uh, I'm you know happy enough with that. Uh, so now I'm gonna sort out with that thing. First off, I gotta clean it. So for the longest time it was just sitting uh, out in the open uh, here uh, but I gotta clean that off and figure out how I'm going to mount these on there and I'm gonna have to go and look and see if I can find out online if this is a Morris tape or if this is just a, a blind hole here it's not threaded not as far down as I can stick my finger in there it does feel like it's a slight taper but you know, what can you tell from sticking your finger in there? Um, I have no idea where my <laughs> telescoping gauges are. They disappeared. Um, they were never in here. So I don't know what happened to them. So if I find them, I could confirm that. But uh, nevertheless, uh, that's for tomorrow. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. And uh, this will be continued tomorrow. Well, predictably, I found them. <laughs> and... Uh, I've got, uh, I've dropped this one into the bore about, I don't know what it would have been, looks like about, you know, three quarter of an inch, and that's where I've, I've got it to it, uh, you know, just uh, tightness, you bring it out to this end, and it rattles around in there, so it is some sort of a taper, but I have no idea what it's supposed to be, or how deep it goes, it only looks like it's machined down to about, tip of my finger from there, so, inch and a half, inch and three quarter, so I have no idea what it's meant to be, but uh, nevertheless, I'll have to see if I can find the docks on this thing here. 
and uh, and uh, figure that out and I'll give this light you know sand with some emery paper and clean it up a bit uh, doesn't look not too nice anyways that really is it for today